This is to demonstrate how the Jamalto SafeNet Key Management and Encryption Platform KeySecure can solve your file and directory based challenges using the Protect File Connector. I will be using a virtual environment for this demonstration consisting of one Windows 2012 R2 server, which acts as my Active Directory server, my Windows File Server, and my SQL database server, and one Windows 7 desktop as my client. The Protect File Connector or agent is installed on the Windows 2012 R2 server. And of course, I'm also running a third virtual server, which is the Key Secure Virtual Appliance, which we are accessing via the HTTPS graphical interface. The use cases we will be demonstrating are securing a Windows file share, securing an entire database directory, and providing access to secure files over SSH or SCP. Let's begin with securing a Windows file share. In this use case, we are defining access for user one, no access for user two, and something special that sits in between for backup admin. On the Key Secure Management Console, as you can see, I've registered a file server, and by clicking on it, you are led to the encryption policies that have been defined and the associated file system paths on the server. For this use case, we will use the share me directory on the file server. By clicking on it, we can view the access policy that was created. As you can see, user one on this domain has been granted decrypt and encrypt, backup admin has been granted backup and restore, and much like the rules on a firewall, we've left the default rule as no access. Now let's have a look at the effect on the actual files. On the left is the file server and on the right is the desktop client. Let's log in as user one. As you can see, we have mapped the share me file share from the file server as drive Z. On the share, we have a file that only user one can view the contents of. Now, if we switch users to backup admin, who, if you remember, has backup and restore access in our policy. We can access the same mapped shared drive. We can see the file, but when we try and access it, we get a very different output. We have access, but it's encrypted and completely useless if we don't have access to the encryption key. So backup admin still has the authority to do his job, back up the files, and in an emergency restore them too, but cannot observe the content. And just as a further demonstration of just how granular the access control really is, if the domain administrator tries to access that directory, even on the server, it's inaccessible. If I'm not explicitly approved for decrypt access, I don't have any. Let's take a look at our second use case, securing an entire database's data directory. On the Key Secure Management Console, you can see we are using the same file server we used in use case one, but this time we have defined another directory path on the server. As you can see, it's a Microsoft SQL Server specific directory and it's where all the database data is stored. If we click on it, we can view the access policy defined. Here you can see we've used a different strategy from the previous use case and restricted encrypt and decrypt access to a process instead of a user. This effectively means that only the SQL server executable has the ability to read or write data to and from that directory. I have added backup access for administrator purely to show you that the files are encrypted. Let's take a look. On the server, we're logged in as administrator with backup access just to enable me to access the files. On the desktop, I have an unencrypted copy of the templog.ldf file as an example of what the files normally look like. As you can see, they're not exactly legible to start with, but you can clearly see English language references. However, if I open the same file from the secured directory,
it becomes clear that it's encrypted and of no use to anyone planning to copy it. But because the SQL Server process has decrypt access, I can start the database server and use it as expected via client tools like normal. Our third and final use case will show how easy it is to integrate encryption and access control into your remote access systems. In this use case, we are using an SSH server to demonstrate. Once again, user 1 will be granted access and user 2 will not. I am using the same server, but a third encryption policy and file system path. Transfer user 1. By clicking on it, we can see that user1 has decrypt access. I've also given user2 backup ciphertext access purely to demonstrate that he will not be privy to the contents of the file. Let's look at the files. If we look at our SSH server configuration, we can see that the two domain users, user1 and user2, have both been given access to the directory transfer user1. Clearly a misconfiguration which could lead to a lot of trouble. Now moving to our client application, in this case WinSCP, which could represent a client logging in remotely to retrieve very sensitive files and that are designated only for their eyes, user1 logs in to retrieve his report. And here we have it. Report.txt is of course unencrypted when accessed by user1. Now let's have a look what happens when user2 logs in. And bear in mind the misconfiguration on the SSH server, which of course allows us access to the directory designated specifically for user1. User2 retrieves what he thinks is his report, and the file is clearly encrypted. The end result being that user2 doesn't see anything he shouldn't, and user1 doesn't lose proprietary data.